And my second question is, uh, uh, when we are talking about the uh, respect in Japanese, you say to that uh, give, uh, you talk about giving respect, and uh, it's not about self, but self for others, is it? Self, self for others. Self for others. Yeah. If, it, if it involves uh, giving respect, <laughs> and it is not for self, but it is self for others, is it? <laughs> giving respect to others. Exactly. Yeah, in fact, what I'm saying is that <coughs> when we see the feelings in relationships, it has to do with the feeling in oneself or another self. So either I am having the feeling in part, you know, sharing it with others, or the other is having the feeling and sharing it with me. Is it the self, uh, self in human being and self in animal, you see? That we will see. <laughs> when we go into the details of the activity of the self, then we will be able to, you know, kind of demarcate that. It is in terms of the activity of the self. Right? The animals are awaken in the activity of selecting and testing. There is human beings also seem to be, you know, awakened in the activity of analyzing, comparing, you know, desiring and things like that. So, it is a question of how aware you have become of your activity. So what is your degree of awareness? So basically, this Transformation from animal to uh, animal consciousness to human consciousness has to do with essentially becoming aware of one's activity, not only of taste and reflection, but also of you know analyzing, thinking, desiring, then also contemplating, understanding. All these are the activity of the self. So when you become aware of these higher activities of the self. Right? You, you know, start living with human consciousness. But if you look at the condition, you know, of human being you know, living with the animal consciousness, then the self is not significantly different from the self of the animal. That we will study. Don't take it just like that. So, so we will study uh, that further. Uh, you are saying test and selection uh, is animal. Uh, for example, if I if I uh, disturb the chicken, uh, the mother hen will chase me. Uh, why would the mother hen will chase me? It's because out of love. So, uh, that love, uh, is that love the quality of self? If uh, that is so, then it is pure taste and selection. Even testing and selecting is the quality of the self. We will see it. Yes. You know, that once we have been able to you know, remarket these two first, then we will go into the details of the activity of the self. Then better, you know, kind of clarity will be possible. Yeah. Any other question? Understanding of the truth, the 
truth about uh, the continuity of happiness, or in other words, the impermanence. So, uh, this uh, right understanding you are talking about uh, came as the experiential understanding uh, that Guruji was talking to me during the Vipassana course. <coughs> The meaning of experiential understanding would be that I can see it for myself. I am not just taking the words of the other. That would be the meaning of experiential verification. Is that true? So, what we are saying here is that I can see for myself, that is one thing. But this seeing for myself, what are the details of it? That has to be understood. So when I am looking at something, I may look at it at different levels. For example, if I am looking at it, I can look at it at this level. I can also look at it at this level. So, when I am looking at him at this level, I am still going through this experiential process, but this may not be sufficient, this may not be enough. I may or may not understand the human being in its completeness. When we are saying understanding, <coughs> we are saying it has to be experiential, but it has to be in its completeness. The unit has to be understood in its completeness, in its entirety. That is what we are trying to say here. And what are those aspects, you know, when you are talking about entirety, that we are trying to unfold one by one. For example, here we are saying, if I have to understand human being, I have to understand the body, I have to understand the self. I have to understand the need of the body, the need of the self. I also have to understand what, how do you fulfill that need. Similarly, we will see, we need to understand the activity of the self and the activity of the body. All these will have to be experienced. So, the things have to be understood in its completeness. That is what is the meaning of understanding, to be very precise. So, when I am you know, experiencing a human being, I have to experience the body, I have to experience the self, I have to experience the need of the self, the activity of the self, right? All this I have to experience. When I have all this put together, this is called understanding. <coughs> and that is why we are trying to unfold everything you know, one by one. Because all this is necessary for me to understand. And if we do that, many of these issues, you know, will slowly surface out. For example, this impermanence. If you are looking at, at this level, this law of impermanence it will be there. But when you start looking at this level, you would realize that there is a law of continuity. significant difference between this body and the self. Here, this is all temporary. This is here. All that you require is the continuity in each one of these things. And the problem which I had mentioned, you know, in the vision which we have, when we try to fulfill this with this, we get this stuff. If you try to fulfill this, with this, it does not work because they are of two different natures. This is of the nature temporary in time, this is of the nature continuous in time. Now if you are trying to need, fulfill the need of this, which is continuous in time, with the help of something which is temporary in time, you get into a whole lot of contradiction. And you can see this law of impermanence has to do with this temporality. 
was there, the law of impermanence was there, the law of continuum was. That is why this cannot be sufficient to fulfill the need of this, the continuous image. And all this we had studied, you know. This is the problem because you are trying to ensure the continuity of happiness is the need of the self. It is continuous in nature with the help of the physical facility, with the help of the sensation, right, through the body. It is also temporary in nature. So you are trying to satisfy something which is continuous in nature through something which is temporary in nature. And that is where you get into trouble. That was not the case, right? Then there was no problem. If the self was of the nature that it can have some time happiness, some time unhappiness, right? Then not having happiness all the time was not a problem. The fact that you want happiness and you want happiness continuously is what is creating problem. Right? Then you have happiness, fine. When you don't have happiness, you are troubled, right? So, what I am saying is that the basic nature of the self is to be in a state of happiness and that too continuously. If that is not satisfied, then the self is in trouble. If the very nature was in permanence, then there was no problem. Sometimes happy, sometimes unhappy, then what is the problem? <coughs> The problem is that that is not the basic nature. The basic nature is the happiness and continuity of happiness. Okay? Therefore, whenever it is disturbed, okay, you are troubled. That is, uh, you are referring to the self <coughs> without the uh, 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 separate that. Realize that 
All these things called anger, anger for example, right? Or jealousy. All this is something which is not naturally acceptable to us. <coughs> because we have not investigated into our own self and not understood what is our natural acceptance, we are indulging into feelings which are not natural to us. Right? And that disturbs our continuity. That is what is called unhappiness. So, the basic nature of the self can be understood if we investigate into this. Right? And then try to make sure that all my desire, thought and expectations are in line with this. Then all those anger and this, you know, jealousy and all these things, right, will not be there. So I will not be disturbed. Right? I'll get disturbed because I have these feelings which are not, you know, in accordance with my natural acceptance. And that is what is called unhappiness. The unhappiness is basically an indicator of the fact that I am not in accordance with this, you know, my own natural acceptance. So, of course, I am talking about this self as it is, to begin with, but then I am trying to investigate and find out, right, what is the state of self? Is it a state which is, you know, naturally acceptable or is it a state which is not naturally acceptable? If it is a state of, you know, which is naturally acceptable, I would like to continue with it. <coughs> if there is a, it is a state which is not naturally acceptable to me, I would like to, you know, kind of change, you know, shift from there to the natural state. <coughs> And that is what we are trying to do, you know. Every time we are asking this question, is it your natural acceptance? I am essentially addressing to that question. So, let's go a little, you know. Uh, yeah. Can uh, this particular happiness equated with uh, uh, eternal happiness in terms of the uh, preservation of the feelings of the self uh, as an individual, as an entity? Yeah, eternal is an equivalent word for continuity. Eternal is what? Continuous in time. <laughs> this is continuous in time. This is temporary. Right? Is there a possibility that the sun can exist without the body? <laughs> that we will see. Presently, you can. <coughs> study the self and the body, you know, in coexistence. <laughs> when you study this self and the body in coexistence, then we can also see whether it is possible for us to access things, you know, not, you know, access through the body. But if you look at the transaction, you know, through the body and then also see whether we are always, always accessing the body or not, then that will be possible for us, that it is possible for the self to access things directly, even if we are not accessing through the body. But then certain you know, things have to be clarified in that connection. But it is possible. So we are talking about this continuousness eternal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So having discussed about the need, we now try to look at the activity of the self and the activity of the body. So if you look at the activity of self, you can see there are activities of desire, thought, expectation. But this thought is going on in you all the time, continuously or only in a while, continuously, right? So, it is going on in the self, this desire is there in the self, this thought is there in the self, this expectation is there in the self, right? And it is continuous in nature, right? If you try to stop it, it is difficult. Right? Can you stop it? It goes on. On the other hand, any work that you are taking from the body, okay, like activity of walking, eating, right? can you take it continuously? Or the body will get tired after some time and you will have to give rest to the body. <coughs> what do you think? <coughs> yes. When you are not having any object in front of you, okay, whether the thoughts are still going on or not going on. <laughs> yeah, see, this is the You have to start looking into yourself. As I said, my job is very simple. Just to draw your attention towards the basic reality and leave it for you to start, you know, investigating into it. So when you are not looking at an object, 
whether there is a thought still going on or not. Okay. It is something you have to start looking into yourself. If it is not going in you, then it is not going in you. That's very simple. If it is going on in you, then it is going on in you. So, I wouldn't expect you to, you know, kind of take it without really, you know, this self-exploration. Self -exploration. In fact, interestingly, you don't, you know, even uh, have had this idea of the self. Yes. Most of the time you are presuming yourself to the body and you are busy trying to do all this. Now at this, in one and a half day time, you have become little aware of yourself. Now when we are trying to look at the thoughts, the desires, slowly become aware of it and see whether it is taking place continuously or is it temporary. So that I will be open for you to investigate. Yes, uh, I think you have selectively used thought and, the, and not mind. I'm just wondering whether why you are doing that. Are you considering self to be more than the mind? Because we normally think of the mind and the body. We have selectively used self in our Yeah, true. So, in fact, when I'm talking about the self, this thought is one of the activity of the self. <coughs> and desire is also one of the activities. And later on we'll see that the understanding is also one of the activities. Right. What is happening uh, as such you know, is that this desire, thought and expectation are there anyway in each one of us. They may be based on understanding, they may not be based on understanding. <coughs> If they are not based on understanding, they may be, you know, may, may not fall in line with the reality as such. Because you don't have the understanding of reality. And because these are not governed by that understanding, right, you may have all kind of desire, thought and expectations. If that happens, that is what puts you in trouble. So what is normally, you know, understood by mind is these activities. Right? This mind may be guided or unguided. So if there is no understanding, then this is all unguided and you don't know where it will end up. Right? When you have the understanding, okay, this will be guided by the <coughs> understanding. Understanding of the reality Okay. and your desire, thought and expectation based on understanding of the reality. Therefore, based on reality. So that shift is important. Right? So just working with mind is not enough. Okay. That is what you generally understand by mind. When I am saying self, it includes this and it also includes this understanding, the realization of the fact, of the reality, of the truth and which is of significant importance. So when I am saying self, it includes this, but there is more to it. That we will see when we talk about the self in more detail. This desire, thought and expectation are some of the activity of the self. And this is there in all of us, all of us, right? Whether based on understanding or not based on understanding. This understanding is also an activity of the self. When you have the understanding of the reality, right, you can have your desire, thought and expectation based on this understanding of reality. And therefore they are sure to be fulfilled. If they are not based on reality, you may think of it, but it doesn't work because it is not based on reality. So, yes, I am purposely not using the word mind here. Because mind has a you know, certain connotation. Okay? At the most it includes thought and expectation or desire, thought and expectation.